how to do this. It's been a month. More than a month. God, I'm a slacker. Hi, I'm Spin, and today I want to talk to you guys about self-destructive behavior and how that can trap us in what is basically quicksand. Self-destructive behavior is any behavior that is harmful or potentially harmful towards the person who engages in the behavior. So with that in mind, I would like to talk to you about five different types of behaviors that are highly self-destructive and the reasons we might engage in those behaviors. By doing this, hopefully it will help us understand and ultimately avoid these behaviors. So let's get into it. Number one, self-defeating mindset. A self-defeating mindset is basically getting in the way of our own success in life. It's having the mindset that everything is going to go wrong anyway, so why does it even matter? Effectively, you've already lost before you've even begun to play the game. These are the people that have a thought process that leads them to believe that they are just going to lose anyway, so what's the point of trying? Now, this could be a hard mindset to get out of because it is filled with self-fulfilling prophecies. I could have sworn that I have at the very least, talked about this once, or maybe a hundred times before. A person believes they will always lose, so they never try, and because they never try, they never succeed, and when they never succeed, they lose. It's terrible. <laughs> and just like that, you are now trapped in this mindset. The question becomes, how do you take yourself out? There is no easy way to put this, what you have to do is start trying things and becoming okay with the idea of failure. People fail at things all the time. It doesn't mean they don't learn anything from it and they don't gain anything from it. You have to stop looking at failures as the end result and more as a teachable moment. If you can manage to do that, then you can manage to dig yourself out of this self-defeating mindset. Number two, self-pity. Ah <laughs> yes, self-pity. This one's a favorite of a lot of people apparently. This is the excessive, self-absorbed unhappiness over one's own troubles. You didn't know, that's the definition. Brought to you by Spin. Have you ever heard of wallowing in your own self-pity? I'm sure somebody has said that to you before. I want you to remember how they said that. By doing this, we focus on the extreme amount of all of the bad things that happen in our lives. When we do this, this effectively places blinders on ourselves and thus further impedes us from seeing any silver lining in the situations that we are going through. In some cases, this becomes almost masochistic in a way such that we enjoy feeling isolated and put upon. It gives us a savage pleasure to inflict this misery upon ourselves and keep it going. In this way, it becomes almost like a drug and an addiction, wherein it feels great but slowly destroys you. So what are we supposed to do to stop this? The short and brutal answer is that you have to stop acting like a child throwing a temper tantrum, and sulking. First, understand that nothing you're doing is going to make the situation any better at all. Whereas you may feel better by doing this, no progress is being made to fix anything at all. All you're doing is perpetuating the problem in hopes of garnering sympathy from other people, which that can be useful from time to time. Their sympathy does not solve your problem either. What you must do is decide that you want to make a positive change in your life and then make a realistic plan to fix what you can. Basically it. That's all you can do. Number three, hiding from emotions. Hiding from emotions or just going cold is something that we all do from time to time. This is the process by which that we avoid dealing with how things make us feel. This is a problem because we tend to bottle all of those emotions up instead of finding a healthy way to express them. This can lead to excessive stress in your life which can ultimately turn to anger where you will likely vent your frustrations on the people closest to you. Oh yes, people love being the unexpected recipients of your high speed emotional baggage aimed squarely at their face. This is why it is so ill-advised to suppress how you're feeling all of the time. 
as it can ultimately push those people most likely to be able to help you away. The best thing you can possibly do with this one is just allow yourself to feel those emotions. It's also advisable to learn various coping mechanisms which will help you deal with these feelings instead of just hiding away from them. Number four, sabotaging relationships. Sabotaging relationships, which is just a form of social suicide, is effectively the willful and purposeful destruction of your relationships in your life. Whether this is because you feel like you don't deserve them or because you feel like it's just going to end badly anyway, it doesn't matter. The end result is always the same. You act in a way that ensures these relationships will end. This rolls directly into the self-fulfilling prophecy that everyone will eventually leave you and give you all the ammunition you need against yourself to not enter into any more relationships ever again. There is only one way to break the cycle, and that is to understand that you're doing it to yourself. It's like saying to the insurance adjuster, I have no idea why my house keeps burning down all the time. All I do is keep a collection of gas next to my collection of lit candles. So you have to be willing to put yourself back out there and to trust people. Equally, you must recognize when you begin to sabotage a relationship by withdrawing or being intentionally hurtful to the other person in order to push them away. Now, this is going to take some diligence and it's going to be a long road, but the rewards are just so immense. So stick with it. You'll get there. Number five, refusing to be helped. This one is basically just pride, but taken to an extreme. However, it can also be symptomatic of self-pity as well. So the argument for pride is basically this. If you allow someone to help you fix the problem, then that would be admitting that you were too weak to fix it yourself, and that at some level, you're a failure. Even though none of this is even remotely true. The argument for self-pity is that on some level you want to remain in this situation and accepting somebody's help would mean solving the problem and admitting that you were overreacting to the situation and that it could have easily been fixed a long time ago. This of course brings with it a great deal of shame. In fact, both cases revolve heavily around avoidance of losing face, whether that be to your friends or to your family or whoever, really. Because why fix an easily solvable problem when you can just continue to suffer up there on your cross? No, I, I completely understand. This makes total sense to me. Sadly, the only thing... Sadly, the only thing that you can do is to swallow your pride, accept that your friends are not going to judge you for receiving or even asking for help. I fully understand that this may be a pill a little too hard to swallow for some, but if you want to get through it, you're just going to have to get over it. There's really nothing else. But I believe in you, and I think you can do it. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope this made you think. I really hope that uh, you were able to look at this and maybe even uh, analyze some of the self-destructive behaviors that you have in your own life and how you might go about fixing them. Realistically, we all have these problems and we all can always benefit from a little bit of self-actualization and understanding where our faults lie. Remember guys, it's not about being perfect, it's about being a better version of yourself each and every day. Anyway, guys, I just want to thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this. Hopefully the content keeps getting better and is far more regular now, now that I've fixed all of the things going on in my life. Whew, that was a lot. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell wherever I put it. Maybe over there. I don't know. Also, remember to follow me on all the social media things, which I will link in the description down below, along with the link to the Patreon and all the other things that I'd like you to take a look at. Also, a special thanks to all of my patrons that uh, have stuck with me through a month-long drought. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for, like, taking the time and the patience to stay with me. <laughs> Good God. And as always, guys, I have some words to leave you with.
Be the flame, not the moth. Bye! Did you bother to read your script? No, I didn't bother to read my script. Why didn't you bother to read your script? I am lazy, you know that.